So yeah, right, here we go. We've got a script on the right. It's not gonna be that great, because you've got me. I'm wearing a cap to cover my haircut. It's terrible, look like an EDL fan. And after what happened uh, with the England game, it's it, it's not when you wanna see. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another video. Uh, this is a, another great example of my protruding intellect when it comes to these crazy, Rocky. wackers and bonkers Bang. videos. I do not usually do such uh, videos like this, but today I thought I'd do something special and take you through Half-Life Alex, which is a VR game created by Valve and released in 2020. The game shocked the world and is an exceptional example of what a VR game can be if the developers actually give a shit. Right, now with us recording, it seems that VR games are being made with an iPad. There are so many similar titles, none of them having isolated factors which puts them above the rest. And if you found a game you like, you might have the trouble finding people to play with. My favourite VR games are story-driven ones. One of the best experiences I had was on a game called Vertigo Remastered, which is a remaster of a game in 2016. However, one drawback of these games is that the story only being four and a half hours, um, which is the length of the game Vertigo Remastered, and a half five Alex ranging from six to eight hours from my experience. And one thing I find strange is that this fucker named Geoff Cayley stated that the game would last 15 hours, which is uh, maybe quite a disappointment to some players who wanted a more thorough and uh, more long experience of the game. Finally, let's get into the review. <laughs> One thing the game does really well is the details well as the creative environments. Both these factors complement each other and is able to immerse you. John Oliver, uh, but if it came down to it... I in the game you play as Alex, and for the majority you're accompanied by a guy called Russell, one of your father's friends who guides you through the game, helping you, and just him being there is quite a relief when you get into stressful or scary circumstances. For example, in the first half of the game, you're on your way to save your father, and need to travel through tunnels in pitch black, and all you have is a torch to light the way. However, you feel the exact way as Alex feels, her character herself asking Russell to speak to her so she can take her mind off the scary atmosphere. This is where VR games excel above other flat screen games. Games. On a first playthrough, it'll get your heart pounding like you're really there and there is a scary zombie chasing after you, and the only way to conquer yourself is to kill it. Of course you can take your head self and leave the room, but when you're in that moment, you get that survival instinct to take your fears and conquer them. Oh, fucking hell. Right, on to next point, gunplay. I, I need to shoot some news. In the game, you start off with a pistol, which is more than enough, you know, to take on whatever comes at you. In certain situations, it is smart to conserve ammo, but the game usually gives you ammo as a sign to prepare for a gunfight. And the ammo it gives you is usually enough to suffice for the gunfight. The guns are nice and something not too crazy. Of course, the game puts this little twist in it, just makes them a bit cooler than, you know, the average gun you'll have in a shooter game. One little feature in the game that the game does really well is you can collect this item called resin, which can be used to upgrade your weapons, adding laser sights, increase magazine capacity, stuff like that. I think this is a simple yet clever concept which is tied into the game elegant. Once you realise you can upgrade your weapons, no matter where you go, you want to check behind doors and make sure you haven't missed anything, or you might have enough resin to upgrade, but have to make a calculated verdict on whether you continue to save for a better upgrade or get this one. All these things add to the game's structure, giving it firm foundation to stand on. However, there are some frustrating situations in the game where it was physically impossible to go onward, causing me after to load a previous save just to conserve ammo for that part. All this can be seen in two ways. This happened to me near the end of the game, where I was sweaty because VR is hot, tired standing up for hours and having to deal with this for another 30 minutes. And this could be resolved with a simple fix, just giving you some more extra magazine, not making you have to load a previous save. But in most situations, you'll have plenty of ammo. However, sometimes I would just make it past the section with zero bullets is better. This is a lot more drastic as guns are the only way to kill combat or monsters. You can't punch them or hit them with an object. It is heavily pushes you towards more gunplay and strategic gameplay. This also makes you use grenades more. Which is just a great addition and help the gunplay a lot. But in some circumstances could use some tweaking. The story itself is very strong, 
When going to release a sequel a half hour for Alex, the stress it must have put on the developers, knowing you had to deliver something that would surpass or be equal to Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2. I think they chose to do it on VR so it could boost the sales of their flagship VR headset, the Valve Index. Although you can still play it on other VR headsets such as the Oculus, which I played on. It might have been easier creating a flat screen game. The fact that they went with VR made the game so much better. It opened up so many new opportunities to work to how they would progress with the game. In the game, usually located on your way to the next big event, you will find little containers on the wall which encode ammo and grenades and will aid you in your next fight. To open these, you must use your multi-tool, which then you solve a puzzle. For me personally, I didn't have too much of a problem with them, but can see why some people might if they are not used to doing precise movements with their VR controller. Next part, attention to detail. I'll give you $600 just to shut the hell up, nigga. I think personally this is where the game thrives. It is like no other compared to any other VR game. You are able to pick up any object, turn it around in your hands and survey your eyes on it to read the labels. It's quite pleasing to do. One of the small things in the game that surprised me is when you won't think that it matters very much. If you are placed into the game you are walking around some houses and stumble across what seems to be your pet and it jumps up and down in this little glass enclosure. You can even pick it up and just feed it with some food. It feels like wherever you go, if it's not even linked to the story or you're supposed to be there, you can do something there. For me, this is truly phenomenal. In the game, there is always places to explore which stretches it off the beaten path. I sometimes would just find myself exploring for ages, forgetting about what I'm supposed to do. This is the way the game immerses you. And this is why I feel like we need more AAA slash high production VR games on the market. Just if you play this game and compare it to any other flat square experience made with the same budget, it's just there's a clear difference. VR has so much more to offer and I feel like it, even though it is a booming industry, it can go so much further. Anyway, back to the game. For me there was a few bugs but nothing major. Climbing ladders won't work but there was just an easy fix of you could just like look at a ladder and it would just teleport you to the top. After about three hours, because I'm fat and I just sit down and play games all day, doing the minimum exercise of standing in my room, somehow, I don't even know how it's possible, I probably should see a doctor. But anyway, my back would just fail. It's not good because it's my spine, the thing that stops me from looking like the weird fucker from Resident Evil Village. The thing is, I'm young, Stephen Hawking could probably stand for longer than me and, you know, so I have to sit my ass down for like 30 minutes to carry on and it's embarrassing when I reach the cutscene and I have to sit down and watch it because it felt like I was going to crumple in half and turn into some origami experiment. Anyway, I'm not going to reveal the ending if you ever go to play it. Uh, it's good. It's a nice ending. Nothing to complain about for me personally. Um, anyway. Well, let's wrap it up. Half Life Alex is a good game, but boy, am I excited for the next Wonder Pets story game. <laughs>